what's in a name? Well, if you're starting a business, there's a lot in the name. And there are some things that you need to consider before choosing the name for your business. Let's look at five separate items. The first thing we want to consider is the sticky factor. You want the idea you want the image for your business to stick with people so that their na so that your name stays in their mind. Brainstorming is a great way to come up with a variety of business names and it's especially helpful if you try to do that with a group of people that you respect and, and that respect the privacy of the business idea. It allows you to get some different input from some different personalities. Do warn you, don't let yourself get tied into one specific option too early because there may be trouble ahead as you're, you're making those final decisions and it can be, can be deflating to have the one that you fall in love with not fit. The second thing to consider is copyright and trademark. Now the copyright and trademark issues, we're not going to get in too deeply in this class because there's too many variables but just on the surface it's important that you're aware that licensing impacts logos, taglines, graphics and even similar names so even if you went McDonald's but spelled your McDonald's differently it's still infringement on their trademark. Much better even though it's a pain to do now it's much better to do the research now before you've gone to all the expense of setting up your business. The next thing to consider is SEO implications. Search engine optimization. Well, search engine optimization means to set your uh, metadata items so that as people are doing searches, your information comes up as high as possible on the page. Now, more goes into it than that, including those who've paid for views above yours, but it does help if you don't set yourself up for failure unnecessarily. For example, let's say you do um, screensavers, you design screensavers, and you're going to do it for celebrities. So if you were to type in celebrity screensaver, chances are you would be blocked by malware. Or even if you were to type in a specific star that you wanted a screensaver for that would also probably be blocked and could cause people some problems for their computers. So the search engines will block your information in order to protect end users, even though you don't mean anything bad by it. Same thing goes for um, possible borderline obscenities. Sometimes they'll block those as well, even if nothing negative is meant by them. Fourth thing to consider is domain names. It isn't always possible to match your business name to your domain name, although I encourage you to try out availability of domains while you're brainstorming. And if what you have in mind is also available on, on a .com website, then that's great. But if you can't, there are some things to still keep in mind. First, don't go with a long name. Too much difficulty in trying to spell it out as you're typing online. Chances are someone will get one of those long, long letters right, or those long, long words wrong, and they'll end up going to a different location. You might want to try something catchy. Let's say you have a taco business. So you do eat a burrito instead of the name of your taco business if it was already taken. And finally, see how your name looks run together. Years ago, I started a business called Idea Disc, and the purpose of my business was to create mini CDs that had resume material in a um, multimedia format. So it had people with video clips of them doing presentations, it had um, downloadable documents of resumes, cover letters, um, awards they had received. It was very cool, and it was, and it was it was fun to put together, but I didn't choose the business name all that well. Idea Disc I chose because as new technology and new ideas came along, it would still have to do with a disc, or so I thought back then, and I thought it would work for anything. Well, once I saw how it looked run together, 
dead kind of jumps out at you, and it turned out not to be the best name in the world. Fifth thing to consider is translations. You may not plan to do business internationally, at least for now. Don't know what the future holds, but maybe you'll have those from other areas coming to you. So you do need to keep in mind what your business name means in foreign markets. And Google and other places have uh, translation free um, translation pages, so you can get at least a general idea. Some mistakes that have been made in the past, Colgate means hang yourself in some varieties of Spanish. That's not what you want. Pepsi slogan, come alive, you're in the Pepsi generation. Translated in Chinese, uh, due to some errors in the writing, uh, it translated to Pepsi brings your ancestors back from the dead. They had to do quite a bit of um, rewriting. They'd already done the um, printing for the, the advertisement uh, when they found out that the shapes of the letters were just slightly wrong. And then finally, Sci-Fi's channel, the, their new name, Sci-Fi, well, in Polish, it's slang for syphilis. Little awkward. As you're developing your brand, it isn't enough to come up with a name for your business. You need to set who you are, what your business stands for. How are you different than others? How are you unique? This short video clip from Steve Jobs will help explain. To me, marketing is about values. This is a very complicated world. It's a very noisy world. And we're not going to get a chance to get people to remember much about us. No company is. And so we have to be really clear on what we want them to know about us. Now, Apple, fortunately, is one of the half a dozen best brands in the whole world, right up there with Nike, Disney, Coke, Sony, it is one of the greats of the greats, not just in this country, but all around the globe. And, but, but, but even a great brand needs investments and in caring if it's going to retain its relevance and vitality. And the Apple brand has clearly suffered from neglect in this area in the last few years. And we need to bring it back. The way to do that is not to talk about speeds and thieves. It's not to talk about nits and megahertz. It's not to talk about why we're better than Windows. The dairy industry tried for 20 years to convince you that milk was good for you. It's a lie, but they tried anyway. And <laughs> the sales were going like this. And then they tried Got Milk, and the sales are going like this. Got Milk doesn't even talk about the product. Matter of fact, it focuses on the absence of the product. <laughs> but, but, but the best example of all and, and one of the greatest jobs of, of marketing in the, the universe has ever seen is Nike. Remember, Nike sells a commodity. They sell shoes. And yet, when you think of Nike, you feel something different than a shoe company. In their ads, as you know, they don't ever talk about the product. They don't ever tell you about their air soles and why they're better than Reebok's air soles. What does Nike do in their advertising? They, they honor great athletes, and they honor great athletics. That's who they are. That's what they are about. Apple spends a fortune on advertising. You'd never know it. <laughs> You'd never know it. So when I got here, we, Apple just fired their agency. They were doing a competition with 23 agencies that, you know, four years from now, they picked one. And we blew that up, and we, <clears throat> we hired Chai Day the ad agency that I was fortunate enough to work with years ago. We created some award-winning work, including the, the commercial vote of the best ad ever made in 1984 by advertising professionals. And um, we started working about eight weeks ago. And what we, the question we asked was, our customers want to know who is Apple and what is it that we stand for? Where do we fit in this world? And what we're about isn't making boxes for people to get their jobs done, although we do that well. We do that better than almost anybody in some cases. But Apple's about something more than that. Apple, at the core, its core value is that 
we believe that people with passion can change the world for the better. That's what we believe. And we've had the opportunity to work with people like that. We've had an opportunity to work with people like you, with software developers, with customers who have done it in some big and some small ways. And we believe that in this world. People can change it for the better. And that those people that are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones that actually do. And so what we're going to do in our first brand marketing campaign in several years is to, is to get back to that core value. A lot of things have changed. The market's a totally different place than it was a decade ago. And Apple's totally different, and Apple's place in it is totally different. And believe me, the products and the distribution strategies and the manufacturing are totally different, and we understand that. But values and core values, those things shouldn't change. The things that Apple believed in at its core are the same things that Apple really stands for today. And so we wanted to find a way to communicate this. And what we have is something that I am um, I am very moved by. It honors those people who have changed the world. Some of them are living, some of them are not. But the ones that aren't, as you'll see, you know that if they'd ever used a computer, it would have been a Mac. <laughs> and the theme of the campaign is, is think different. It's the people honoring the people who think different and who move this world forward. And it's, it is what we are about. It touches the soul of this company. So I'm going to go ahead and roll it, uh, and I hope that you feel the same way about it I do. to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them change things. They push the human race forward. And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. So, my questions to you or what will your company and your product or service stand for? What emotions will your business ignite? And how does your business name, logo, tagline, brand tie in with those emotions?